Hello everybody, my name is Michael, and today I want to talk to you a little bit about LED lights. Now I love LED lights uh, a lot like this one. I mean, come on, just look at it. It's awesome, absolutely beautiful, but there's a problem. You start collecting a lot of these things and you end up with a problem like this. Remotes bad. All remotes are different. You forget which one is which. And they take batteries. Batteries. I mean, what is this? The Stone Age? I mean, if a battery goes out in one of these remotes, I'm not going to replace it. Okay, so now you might be asking, well, Michael, if you're so sick of having all these remotes, what are you going to do about it? Oh, well, I'm glad you asked, interested viewer. Say hello to the HM10 Bluetooth module and the NRF 24L01 radio module. With these two devices, I will be able to connect my phone to an Arduino via the Bluetooth module and send out whatever data I want to to the other devices on the NRF radio mesh network. So this way, I'll be able to add new devices to the network at any time and, hey, what are you looking at me like that for? Michael, you're like a huge nerd. <laughs> yes. Yes, I am. All right, let's get into it. So first things first, I need to grab one of my favorite LED lights and take it apart. Of course, being very, very careful not to break it so that I can jam a bunch of electronics into it later. Step two is to wire everything together on a breadboard so that we can get it all working first without having to solder anything together permanently yet. And so exactly how is this going to work? Well, a little backstory on how it currently works. When you press any button on this flimsy little remote here, the remote will generate an IR signal with the IR emitter, which is right here. Now that IR signal represents an 8-bit number that'll travel literally through the air from this remote and it'll be received by the IR receiver inside of the light, which you can see right here. The IR receiver is then able to decode that IR signal into a digital signal that it puts onto this output pin right here and that is fed into this chip right here, which I believe is a ROM chip that can control uh, the color and the brightness of uh, these LEDs here. So essentially what I need to do is to replace the remote entirely because the remote is terrible with the Arduino Bluetooth module radio combo that will be able to receive commands from my phone as I mentioned earlier. This is what we will call the home node. I then need to replace the IR receiver here inside the light with an Arduino that can receive commands with its radio from the home node. So the commands that would normally be sent by the remote to the light are the exact same commands that will now be sent by my phone to the home node to the light. Does that make sense? Oh, uh, no. No, it doesn't make any sense at all, dude. Well, then I invite you to rewind the video. Oh. And step three is to write all of the magical code that makes it work perfectly first try. <laughs> right. Now, the code is, uh, it's really cool and all, it's really dope, but, uh, explaining it just, it's just really boring. So, uh, the code will be on GitHub for all of the thousands, millions of people who I'm sure will inevitably want this. So, uh, there you go. Basically, there are some really nice software libraries for the NRF radio and the HM10 that I utilize in order to make sending and receiving data really straightforward. Oh, and I did have to write my own NEC IR protocol data sending functions that would allow the Arduino to imitate the IR receiver interacting with the light's ROM chip, which was hard, but uh, yeah, let's breadboard this thing. Alright, 
there we go. The completed system all wired up. It is late. I am tired, but such is the engineering way. Now, I found this really great app on the App Store called Dabble. I've got it pulled up on my trusty handy dandy iPhone 7 here. Now, the great thing about this app is that it already existed and I didn't have to make it, but it works really well and it integrates super easily with Arduino. You just import the libraries and you're ready to rumble. All right, so now that everything is wired up and powered on, the first thing you do is open up the app and hit the connect button right here. And then you go and find your device. All right, so now it's connected and I'm just gonna use the terminal part of this app so that I can send it custom commands. So because I have this set up as a network that multiple devices can connect to, the first command I will send is the device name. So in my case, it's my BB-8 light. So I send BB-8 and that went through. Now this means that all of the following commands I send from this point forward will go to my BB-8 light. So now I wanna turn the light blue. So I will send my command that I've made for just turning the light to the first shade of blue. So I will type B zero and look at that. There you go. Let's go ahead and test another shade of blue so that I can see that different commands are in fact working. So I'll send B one. And there we go, that changed the color. Let's try red, boom. So I'm pretty happy with this. I can send any command that the remote originally could and see the resulting color on the LEDs. All right, so the next problem is that we have all of this and it needs to go back inside of the light. All of this into this. Sure, no prob. All right, so everything is fitting pretty nice and snug in here. I just need to shimmy it around and get the cap back on. All right, gonna do a quick test to make sure this thing still works. And I can finally put this back in. Beautiful. All right, we're good. Now I'm also not a huge fan of the home node just sitting out here all a big mess like this. So I wanna solder it all down to a proto board and to make a case for it, which means I'll need to do some 3D modeling. Okay. Oh my gosh, that flew all the way into the closet.
All right, folks, we have come full circle here. We have the light in all of its glory put back together with all of the electronics nestled safely inside. We've got the home node looking nice and neat with its freshly printed case. Now that everything is put back together and plugged in, we'll send a command and see if it actually still works. Thank goodness, it still works. Well, I hope you all had fun watching me overcomplicate this very simple task. If you liked the video, leave a comment. If you hated the video, leave a comment. I will post the code on GitHub for anyone who's interested. And with that said, I think there's only one thing left to do.